So for a little over a week now, I've been starting to hear a whine from my front right wheel. I assume that it's the bearing, um, but within the last day, day and a half, it got really bad to the point where I jacked up the car and I checked for wobble, and guess what? The wheel is wobbling. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing my front wheel bearings on this E46 M3. With that being said, welcome back to Yev's Builds. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to really see it, but you might hear it, listen. Yeah, it's not supposed to be wobbling like that. Look, that's the rear one that's already been replaced. Solid, solid as a rock. This one is not. Oh, dude, that's bad. Uh-oh. I'm excited to see this, though. First, you're gonna to wanna to take the wheel off, obviously. Then we're gonna be removing the caliper. The caliper has one 18 mil bolt right there and a second mil 18 bolt right there. You remove those and you wanna hang the caliper by like a bungee cord or maybe some sort of wire and you don't want it to hang by the actual brake line. There we go. That's sitting right there. Next up, you take a five mil Allen. I already pre-loosened this and there's gonna be two Allen bolts right here to remove the actual rotor itself. <laughs> and here we go, the fun part, right? Uh -huh. Something that's wobbling. Let's get a mallet. Tell me to see it. <laughs> no. If you're having a hard time taking this rotor off like we are, it's always a good idea to uh, put some lubricant on it, some WD, let it sit there for a little while. Should come off after that. So, as you can see, the rotor is already off. Um, it was stuck on there pretty good. What we did is we, we took an actual, like, like a hammer hammer, like a metal one. We tapped it out where the lugs go, but around kind of in between the lugs, right? And we gave it some good, good, good few hits, and it pretty much just fell off. Next up, we gotta remove this little cap right here. Pretty much this cap is supposed to be replaced when you're doing this type of stuff, but I was never sold one, and it's fine, we'll just clean her up. If you can see right at the edge of it, there's a little bezel and the cap starts right here. So you need a little flathead and just start tapping away with a little mallet until it pops off and you can pry it off. There we go, just like that. Ooh, this centering lock looks pretty good. Doesn't look like that seized. We'll see. So what we gotta do now is you see this little, this little tab right here, we gotta unpry it. We gotta unpry this little sucker and we're gonna remove this big nut. There we go, that's unlocked. And now the size of this nut, too small. And then, to take this actual center nut off, as you can see it's already removed, you need a 46 millimeter socket. You take that sucker, you unscrew it, what about that? That's not cool. You guys bring the sledge? Oh, dude. Sledge method. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, Eddie, how are you gonna move? That is you too. <laughs> move towards it. Oh, well, there's your problem there, bud. Our secret weapon, get yourself an Atari. <laughs> so what you saw in the B-roll was simple. We had to remove this dust shield. There's three 10 mil bolts over here, and then in the back there's an ABS sensor. It's gonna be a five mil Allen. Remove the sensor, remove the shield. We had to remove this because the race was stuck. The race is the back, pretty much the, the portion that covers the bearing. It's an enclosed bearing. That's the back portion of it. It got stuck, so we had to cut it through. Uh, make sure to just be real careful with the spindle. Don't cut the spindle, don't damage that. Um, heat it up, cut it, and get that thing removed. And now we wait for it to cool off because now we're gonna be applying a new bearing on and we're gonna be using a lot of grease and all that, so we're moving on, dude. After you remove all this, you wanna take a Scotch Pride or some sort of cleaning tool, maybe some sort of something to clean it off and clean off your spindle man clean it off make it all nice and smooth get all that rust and dirt off and just clean it okay for us not to remove this hub ever again the way we just did today a good idea is to put some sort of anti-seize on the spindle 
a good a good brand that we've been using for a while is Permatex. It's good stuff, man. You can be generous with this. And before we apply the hub, you also want to use the same sort of anti-seize on the inside. And just pretty much try to slide it on, man. It's gonna go in. Not as easy as it might sound, but a good idea is to take some sort of block, some sort of flat surface block. Well, no, it's not gonna further move. Mm. That's already in the way. Nut it on, yeah? Obviously, we can't get this on all the way with just knocking on it because the spin box just starts to poke out. So the next move to do is to take the actual nut that's on here, you take it back on, and torque it down to 214 foot-pounds. Oh, muscle guy. Woo! There you go. But we're not done. We're gonna loosen it up. You just repeat the process a few times until it's actually properly seated all the way down and you're good to go. There we go. And you retorque it again, just to make sure that it's all good and it's seated all the way and you're solid. There we go. Wow, what a ring, dude. <laughs> Woo! So this little locker thing, after you torque it down a few more times and you loosen it and you torque it down again, this little lock in the nut. Ideally, you want to replace this, but uh, this bearing didn't come with any of this, so I'll just reuse this nut. You bend it back in, and the nut is actually locked on the spindle. Right after that, you clean this entire surface area off, put the center cap back on, put your rotor back on. Take a scotch bright and you kind of clean up this area from the, from the rotor itself. Clean it off, use some brake cleaner, just so it'll be nice and smooth. Put your rotor back on, take that 5 mil L key, put it back on, Tighten it in. Unfortunately, these Timken ones don't have the guiding pins here, and there's only one locking bolt instead of two. I'll keep the OE one just in case. I might change my mind later or something, I don't know. But now it's the caliper, dude. The best way to install the caliper if it's not decompressed all the way, if the piston on the other side is not compressed all the way, you remove this clip, you just gotta remove these two sides and it pops out. It slides the caliper on, tighten the two 18 mils in the back, and put this clip back on and pretty much you're set. Clean this rotor off with brake cleaner. Clean it all up and make sure nothing's wobbling like it isn't now. That's great. And put the wheel back on and you should be good to go, dude. That's how you do a bearing job on an E46 M3. Dude, I'm just saying, if you're not aware of this channel, we're doing some big things. We're building a V10. We got some M5 projects. We got a bunch of stuff going on. So subscribe, like and share, do whatever you got to do. but. If you're interested, keep in tune, man. Peace.